Not least this. Um, talks due to take place this summer about more access for broadcasters next season. Now, I know you're like... I think you're from the school of thought they've got enough already in terms of territorial access at stadium. I am. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I mean, it's being... the qu- Various questions are being asked. Is it time for clubs to open doors now to broadcasters like never before next season? Um There are proposals for a bigger presence at training grounds by broadcasters. Half-time cameras in the dressing room without sound. Without sound. But we at least see what goes on at half-time in the dressing room, although you don't hear it. And the clubs apparently are quietly giving their backing to more access amid suggestions that things should change. If you are still at the top of the house at Palace, Simon, would you be saying, you've got far enough, you're getting no further? Well, I would, yes. Um, but of course, if, it, if there were, if I was in the Premier League and twenty other clubs or nineteen other clubs wanted it, I'd have to get on with it, wouldn't I? Um, because that's the no- nature of collective bargaining. I mean, <laughs> you get into the situation where how much is too much? Where do you get the line? Where do you draw the line? What do you got to do? See, so play on a toilet next to get the full length and breadth of experience. <laughs> I mean, come on now, what are we actually needing to understand? The, the content is at a level where we're seeing a maximum amount of insight that I think we need to see. I understand why broadcasters want more. Because more is better, more is bigger, more is a different opportunity, more is more monetizable. Yeah. And if football can see the monetization of it, then it'll do it to some extent because it'll be another way to be able to meet the demands of the players' wages or give themselves an, an ability to make their football clubs profitable. But I do think there is a balance. I, I do believe it's insatiable uh, from fans wanting to see well, everything you, that you, goes on, well, watch well, and all, it, flying is the it, wall. Is it? Was I mean to some extent is it? it is I mean Simon. we create the demand and we feed the demand. I do think there is a space for information, but I do think there is an there is an overindulgence. There's a balance between wanting to see enough and wanting to see no more. Now you're saying it's insatiable and you're it saying is. it's unsatiated. I'm not saying I don't believe that to be the case. I, unsatiated. You, All right. Unsatiated is a demand that hasn't been satisfied. Right. Okay. That's insatiable. not a word I made up. Insatiable. Unsatiated. Right. Google it again. Get okay. another word googled. Utilizable. Exactly. You Don't saw you saw how successful Sunderland Till I Die was. Oh, but it was crap. It wasn't. It was rubbish. It you, was. Just, you, you just saw people like Charlie Medlin running around being the clowns that they are. What is that insightful? You saw All or Nothing with Tottenham, which you basically looked at people going, was that staged? Was that really Danny Rose are you kidding? the cameras? No, I... Listen... I, for me, the not, deliberation between Mourinho and Deli Alley wasn't unwatchable. It's unmissable. I, I, do I think it was unwatchable? Do I think it was informative? Do I think it was genuine? Did it give us a genuine insight? No, I think it was staged for the cameras. And if no. you think, if you believe, and um, that people are going to do a fly on the wall documentary, it's going to be honest, and you're going to get a real appraisal of it's it. Real life. Then you're then you're mad because it won't work that way. And people won't allow it to work that way. I tell you where you want to do it. Put, if you want to see negotiations, put negotiations with agents. Put that sort of stuff in place. See how that gets on. That would give, give you an interesting broadcasting. But you'll never see that because the agents wouldn't want it because you'd see what a revolting bunch of wretches they are. Negotiations the between is, a club owner and an agent. That's interesting. In a, insight, no, but you'll never see I would it. Watch. You'll never see it because you'll then see the true length and breadth of the horrors that agents are, and that will they'll never allow that. But the the feeling now that football, if you give it broadcasters, this is not a broadcasters. It's not their game. It's not their game, and broadcasters, whilst they are, they've had, they've added invaluable content. It's not their game, and there should be a pushback from the game that there's certain things that don't need to be seen. In an ideal world, people believe in their own little world that they should see every access, every nuance, every peculiarity, and they shouldn't. There's no need for it at times. Well, what are, what are the clubs? And what's the point p- of seeing something you can't hear? Because then you're like, yeah, I don't quite understand that. Because that's basically taking half time cameras in the dressing room without sound. So we're looking at a bunch of people gurning at a manager, either involved or not. And we don't hear what they say. But what about the clubs producing the, their own content and monetizing their own behind the scenes content? Well, they are. We're already, some, but are they we are already, by definition, that's what Netflix have done with All or Nothing. Hmm. So that's what they're doing. Hmm. I mean, I did it years ago. Yeah, but ma- on match day, on match we day. We did it years ago when, a, when Channel 4 came to us and wanted to do a documentary about. Academy Youth Development, and it was the worst thing I ever did. What, at Crystal Palace? Yes, the worst thing I ever did. Steve Why? Bruce was a manager because they turned it into something that I didn't think was of benefit to the football club. They turned it into some hyperloy of, look what football you can make, look how much money you can make, look at the car park. You look at the would car. have loved, so you were in this, were you? No, God knows, no, I wasn't in it, no. It was about the youth, de- it was about the academy, how to become a young footballer in an academy. So you denying you were in this? I wasn't, I wasn't there was not one scintilla 
off. But you film. signed it off. You said yes to I, it. I thought at the time, in association with the first team manager, that any advertisement that was a promotion of the football club in a certain way would be the look and feel that I wanted. But I was wrong. It wasn't. What I saw was a glorification of certain aspects of football, how much money is involved, what players can get, how quickly they can get it in their career, what young players can look forward to. All of that crap that I didn't want. I wanted young players to come out of the academy wanting to be professional footballers, not wanting to go and get a big bag of money as their primary motivation. And that's what came out, was it? And that's the way they portrayed it. But is that what came out? Is that, is that what well, that's came what, over? But that's the how, comment but that's came how over. they portrayed it. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. how they portrayed Why it. Why weren't they put, you in it? I didn't want to be in it. It wasn't about me. It was about, it was about, Did they not ask you to be in it? I can't remember, but well, I wouldn't have been interested in it. But you would have added value to it with your yellow suit and your pudding bowl haircut. <laughs> and my yellow pudding bowl haircut. <laughs> you, you would have added value I didn't, to First it. of all, I didn't have a yellow and suit. Right? You have a yellow suit because the stains that you leave on things, right? That's why your suit is yellow. <laughs> oh, right? get out. But getting into the territory of my pudding my bowl haircut, suit, I right? have a choice with my hair. You tragically do not. Yes, I do. So once upon a time, I had hairstyles that I liked. And you can ridicule them as much as you want. But going back to the question in point... You liked... Is... You look do like, we believe... You look like a sheep do, in the king of do, we, do we believe that broadcasters should have more space and more opportunity? The broadcaster will. The broadcaster will eat it up. Mm. They will have... They, if they can have their way, they'll have at home with the players. But so right? will the viewers. You see, I, I, no, I don't they understand won't. why you're not having this. Because I... I because the appetite Because insatiable. I think there's something about an enigma... Something about unseen things that create myths. I'll tell you something. They'll, if they allow cameras to go in the dressing room and allow cameras to follow them around, they'll debunk every single myth about how hard these people work, how committed they are, how much is going on behind the scenes, how it's the Wizard of Oz pulling the buttons and pushing the hooter, right? because it isn't what people think it is. So they'll never really allow it because it'll debunk every single myth. So there you go. The broadcasters will make the point you make on a regular basis for you. But football won't want it that way, and I don't think it should want it that way. I think there's something more alluring about the idea of something rather than the visualisation of it. There does need to be a line between what you should see, what you could see, and what you need to see. OK, so I when the proposals we, come along this summer, if you were at the top of Palace today, you'd vote against them? I would be reluctant. Uh, but I would also... I, I would to give, also, to I give would, I would broadcasters also, more access? I would, yeah, because it'll never stop. If you, if you, it'll never stop. It'll never end. It'll never end, and they'll be entitled to see every aspect of every single thing. And that's what I'm uncomfortable with, because it sets precedence of where they go next. But mm. I'd also... Without being dictatorial, which is not myself, <laughs> I, I would I would be asking the first team manager what he thought. Okay, and if he didn't agree with my view, I'd be asking him to think about it again. Would you have cameras in the boardroom? Yes, because I never went in there. Well, you must have been when you well, had your board meetings. You know, I, I own a football club. I was a hundred percent shareholder. I didn't need a boardroom or be a board meeting. I made the decisions. So it was a, it was a total like South American dictatorship, yes, was it? All absolutely. Right. Okay. Yeah. Just, just for my for information, <laughs> who's got the bowl? You or the hairdresser? Who's got the bowl? Yeah. I never had a bowl haircut. It's a misrepresentation. Kidding. I had a nice bob. It was quite. You what? Bob. You had a bob. He had a bob. A oh bob haircut. God, that's worse. Just give me a bob, will you? Not much off. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.